England and Wales Six Nations 2022. The historic rivalry resumes this Saturday, 4.45 uh, from Twickenham. We're going to go through the squads, some recent results, some predictions and stats, and you guys can have your thoughts on how this one is going to pan out. Both sides have started with a 1-1 one -on -one record. Both sides lost their first games. England to Scotland and then Wales to Ireland. But both sides bounced back England to be expected against Italy. And then Wales, written off by many, uh, performed pretty well against um, against Scotland to win their game. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. It's always it's always a pretty tight game uh, between England and Wales. With that being said, the most recent result might speak otherwise. Um, for England, they have got some pretty good news with a couple of guys being fit again after being injured. I mean, the front row is Genj, Cowan, Dickey, and, uh, and Sinclair. Remember, Sinclair was on the bench for the last one. I think Cowan, Dickey... Uh, was also a bench for the last one. So it's a little bit of rotation from Eddie. He does like to do that, especially with the front rowers. Uh, Yules and Itoje are the second row. So Itoje is back into the second row after being on the blind side in the last game. But that's to make way for the return of Courtney Laws. That's a bit of phenomenal news for if you're an England fan. Um, just great to have the big man back. Line out time, dominant tackle time is going to be um, pretty pleasing anyway to have that guy back and he is captain takes the captaincy uh, from Tom Curry who is still in the side he's at number seven and Alex Dombrant uh, continues on at number eight Randall and Marcus Smith that kind of exciting 19 combo continues to build uh, an experience and you know uh, just game time together there's nothing like having a pair like that just play together kind of week in week out uh, as much as they can so their relationship is going to build which is as I said, pretty pleasing for English rugby. Big news also in the faith of the big man, Manu Tuilangi. Here's the part where I talk about how Manu Tuilangi is going to add a huge impact as a big ball-carrying center and how it's nice to have a big man at number 12. But of course, since then, he's been injured. Uh, so in all likelihood, England will switch Slade to 12, maybe bring in Daly at 13 because he was initially supposed to start on the bench or potentially march it at 13 or maybe march it on the bench. We will just have to wait and see ominous words um, hopefully he can stay fit Slade moves to 13 to make way for Manu uh, the wings are still Noel and Malins hopefully Noel can get a few more minutes into him than last time I think he only lasted about 17 minutes last time before going off with concussion but he's back fit which is really good news and um, Freddie Stewart the reliable high ball man uh, is there at fullback the bench uh, George Marler and Stewart are the front row replacements Ezekwe drops down to the bench remember he started at lock last time but with the Toje moving because of laws, then uh, he drops down a spot. Sam Simmons is still riding the pine. Ben Youngs, I think, is going to become England's most capped player ever if he gets off the bench. So congratulations to him. I know he's kind of um, given a fair bit of grief by some, but that's a heck of an achievement. So congratulations to him, assuming it happens. Uh, George Ford and Elliot Daly. So a lot of experience to come off that bench in the backs that is for sure if you guys want england rugby gear they're having all kinds of sales on the sales are usually timed for like a bunch of hours so uh put a link down in the description for them if you want england rugby gear uh for wales they've also made a few changes they're also uh bolstered by the return of a few kind of big name players uh when jones ryan elias and tom francis is the same front row as last time tom francis has quietly been going pretty well hasn't he i've been pretty pleased uh with him he's Bag to try in his Six Nations campaign so far as well. Uh, Rollins and Beards, the same second row. Moriarty uh, is shifting to number six this week. Tane Basham is shifting to number seven. A lot of people are saying he's shifting back to the open side, but I seem to remember he packed down on the open side last game anyway, even if he had the number six jersey on, but correct me if I am wrong. And uh, Falatel is there at number eight. Falatel's return, certainly a welcome one. Goodness gracious me, like he is, he is class. I mean, nothing to take away from the likes of Ariadne or Wainwright, but just having big Talupo there at number eight, uh, I think you'd have to be pretty pleased. So uh, that's happy days for the Welsh fans, much like the English fans will be welcoming Manu and Courtney uh, to see Talupo there at number eight for Wales. Pretty pleasing. Um, Thomas Williams and Dan Bigger, the same 9-10 combo. Um, so I don't think Dan Bigger played in the Premiership last week. So hopefully he's kind of well rested. Uh, captaining at 10. Nick Tompkins, Owen Watkin. Same midfield. So they resisted the urge to put Josh Adams in, in the midfield. But Josh Adams is back. So another bit of pleasing news. And he's in on the left wing. Cuthbert's on the right wing. Which means... Um, it means Louis Rezat. 
is out of the side. And to be fair, against Ireland, his foot was strapped and he didn't look 100%. He didn't look like he wanted to run the ball. And then he was kind of, you know, done all ends up by um, by Darcy Graham at one point and just has he's kind of had a quiet start to the tournament. So maybe it's a good chance for him to kind of recover. I mean, they've, they've basically said that um, the wingers they've picked are, are more suited to playing England. So... I mean, is he talking about the high ball? I know Josh Adams is phenomenal under the high ball. Is Cuthbert like a high ball specialist more than Reese Emmett? Hmm, anyway, I think it's Cuthbert's 50th game though. So congratulations to him if that is the case. Uh, and Liam Williams continues on at 15. Reserves wise, Lake, Thomas and Leon Browns come into the sides. Ford replacements, Seb Davis is still there. Jack Morgan drops to the bench after starting the last one. Kieran Hardy is there. As a uh, halfback replacement, so congratulations to him on his return to the side because he was in cracking form for Scarlets the other day. Uh, Gareth Anscombe's also back in, so there's no Sheedy, um, there's no Gareth Davis. Those guys have had to make way, and then Jonathan Davis, who had a pretty good cameo from the bench last game, uh, gets a chance to do the same at Twickenham this week. Some interesting stats for both sides, like Nick Tompkins. No one's really talking about him that much, but he's had more tackles than any back in the competition thus far. So he's been um, very much a nuisance. He shoots out of the line and absolutely looks to make guys' lives miserable. He has missed six tackles, which is quite a lot. I think he's second equal for missed tackles in the comp, but I think sometimes his role is more just to get into people's faces. So if he misses the tackle, it doesn't matter as long as he disrupts the play. Obviously, you'd like to make the tackle. Um, and Alex Dombrant, like everyone talks about his, his ball carrying. I saw an interview with the man himself, and he was talking about being a really attacking presence, but he's had more turnovers won than anybody in the competition thus far. Usually it's like a tight burn or, you know, you maybe think Tom Curry for England's going to win more turnovers, but Don Brown with four is uh, is leading the way. So I think he I think he got a bunch in that last game, to be fair. But um, yeah, that's just an interesting wee stat for him. Team-wise, a bit concerningly for Wales, they've had the lowest meters per carry rate of the competition. You know, like the gold standard is kind of four. You know, you want to be carrying an average of four meters per carry. Wales are at three, which is below Italy. Italy's at 3.4. So that speaks to a little bit about, maybe that was, I think the, the, the numbers against Ireland really brought the average down. It was two point something. Ireland really shut down. Uh, and that's not just Italy. They had 4.2 against Scotland. So England's been able to get themselves over the advantage line a fair bit better. But that being said, like you've seen some good improvement uh, in the Welsh lineout in particular. It improved a lot from week one to week two. In week one, it was really a big weakness. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Wales conceded any points in the fourth quarter of either of their games. So they've been kind of closing out games pretty well, whereas they've scored seven and scored three in both games. So the seven was kind of a consolation in the first game and the three was the difference maker in the second. So, yeah, maybe that's a bit of pleasing stuff for, for Wales. England and their games, they've been dominating possession. Um, they're kind of first equal with Ireland, and Ireland love a possession-based game. So the fact that England are kind of equal with Ireland in those terms uh, just speaks to how well they've been able to dominate possession. They've also been loving a mall. They've had more malls than any team in the Six Nations over two rounds. I think they've been averaging nine malls a game. So uh, Wales will certainly have to front up in the forwards physically because England are going to certainly target that area you would think um recent history between the sides is pretty tight you've got three results going England's way two of them going Welsh for the Welsh I mean the the, the last game was 40 points to 24 um which is I guess a bit of an anomaly like the, the score line doesn't seem to push out that much but if you look in five matches ago it was 33 19 which is also a bit of blow at that time in England's favor so that kind of balances it out. You got a 13-6 and then you got a 33-30. You got a 24-13. So the games average out to be England 24, Wales 23. So it tends to be pretty tight stuff between England and Wales, which is pleasing because, like I said, it's a traditional rivalry and that's what you want to see. Uh, predictions wise, the English at home, kind of no surprises, are big time favourites. The rugby forecast algorithm says England by 10. And the bookies say England by 14. So, yeah, we will see how things go. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think these teams have been picked? Anybody you would like to see in each lineup which is not selected? If you want to watch the games, you guys in the UK will be happy to watch it on 
uh, BBC or ITV, I forget which one's got the rights for this game, but um, yeah, if you guys are outside one of those free territories, VPN in the description, you can jump on BBC or ITV, watch happily for free. So um, yeah, you guys have any thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.